Mixcloud got hacked, a bulk SMS messaging service also got hacked, and Androids are vulnerable to a new flaw. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for December 3rd, 2019. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. It's because of the generosity of people that watch this show that I am able to make it every single week. So as a thank you, I am giving away limited edition holiday cards to everybody who signs up at any perk level as a thank you, because I appreciate you. And now onto the news. The online music streaming platform called Mixcloud allegedly had a breach leaking 21 million user accounts. The data was found on the dark web being sold for about $2,000 or 0.27 bitcoins. The seller, called AWS, offered Motherboard a small sample set of 1,000 Mixcloud accounts to authenticate if the leak was real. The data included usernames, email addresses, country of origin, registration date, last login, IP addresses, and robustly hash passwords. According to the seller, the data was obtained in late 2019 on or around November 13th. AWS was also involved with the hacks of Canva, Chegg, and Poshmark, just to name a few, so this data leak sounded legitimate. Motherboard attempted to create Mixcloud accounts with the email addresses provided, but was unsuccessful because the accounts were already created under them. Now, Mixcloud was first informed of this breach by journalists, and the company was unaware of a leak. Through several credible reports, though, Mixcloud determined this to be a likely scenario. They posted a news bulletin about the breach on their website, and they began an investigation into the incident. The company recommended that users change their passwords, even though they do not believe the passwords were actually compromised, though the hashes obviously were. Now, while most users sign up using Facebook OAuth, the direct signups had hashed and salted passwords, using SHA-256 as the algorithm, which is a very strong hashing function that would be incredibly tough to crack. Now, while the week of Thanksgiving usually comes with slow security news, we did get to hear about an Android vulnerability that is being exploited in the wild. Researchers at the Norwegian security firm Promon, who specialize in app security, discovered this vulnerability was left unpatched and could allow a malicious app to steal banking and login credentials of the device's user. To work, the vulnerability, which is called Strandhog, would need to get exploited by a malicious app that a user user installed on their device. When that app is open, the malware could display a fake UI over launching the actual application. Now this can trick users into thinking that they are using legitimate applications. So if, for example, a user chose to type in their username and password to log into an app, the malware could potentially steal that data. An attacker could receive that data instantly from the device, allowing them to gain access to sensitive applications like banking apps. Now the attack could also allow a malicious app to do privilege escalation by tricking users into granting incorrect permissions, like permissions to read text, view location data, listen to phone calls, or even access the camera. So how does it work? Well, Strandhog is a flaw that happens during multitasking, specifically when a user is switching between tasks or processes for different applications or operations, the Android phone uses a feature which is called task reparenting, which puts the processing power towards whatever app is currently being used on the screen. Strandhog uses task reparenting whenever the user clicks on a legitimate app, but it fires up code in the malicious app at the same time. Now again, the researchers did state that they have already seen this in use in the wild, and it is unlikely that a user would spot the malicious app. It doesn't require root access, and it works on all versions of Android without any additional permissions. The malicious apps were being distributed through the Google Play Store via downloader apps or droppers. Now a dropper is an app that pretends to have the functionality of a popular app like a game, a utility, or even a photo editing app, but in reality, reality, it's installing additional applications that can be malicious in the background. A legitimate looking dropper could then install malware that took advantage of the Strandhog vulnerability. The researchers discovered 36 malicious applications using the Strandhog vulnerability and being distributed on the Google Play Store, which have now been removed. 
According to Promon, Google had 90 days to patch the vulnerability, but they have not done so, so the researchers went public about the issue. Now, since these apps are already being used in the wild, keep an eye out for suspicious activities such as an application asking you to log in after you've already logged in, weird permission pop-ups that do not include the app name or ask for strange permissions, app glitches like buttons not working or the back button being wonky. Downloading applications from known developers can also definitely help. Now, at time of writing, no comment has been made from Google about the flaw, so it's not certain certain whether this will be fixed in a reasonable amount of time or if we will continue to see the attack spread. The full report from the researchers at Promon is available in the provided links down below. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. The annual physical rewards are ready to ship. This year, the rewards include some really cool stuff, so give me a second. I'm going to show you what these are because they're awesome. I got some stickers. Ta-da! Some awesome stickers. These are just a few of the cool things that I'm giving away on Patreon. I have this awesome poster that my amazing friend Len Peralta drew of my face, and it says threat wire at the bottom, and I'm signing them for patrons. So that's the other annual reward. And this is absolutely my favorite reward ever because this is the first time I've ever made my own board. This is a totem board. It's where you put all of your SAOs, which stand for something sh something add-on I'm sure you can guess what the S stands for but you light them up and it powers via micro USB and then you can display it on your computer desk it's amazing and it says threat wire and it's super shiny and it's copper it's amazing I love it so much so I'm super proud of this this was made by my friend twinkle twinky and it's incredible you can check him out on Twitter I'll put his link down below as well so you can see all of his other badge work but this is my first one it's so cool so this is the other reward I'm giving out to some of the perk levels on patreon as an annual reward. So if you sign up now, you will get this for the next year. So after your first year of signing up, you would receive one of these or the sticker or the poster, or maybe all of them, depending on which perk level you sign up at, uh, as well as this. So I'm very proud, can you tell? Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> as I was saying, I also want to start a security and privacy audio podcast too, as a part of the ThreatWire feed. That is my next Patreon goal, so if you want to check it out, check out my community down below. The link is in the description, and if you want a holiday card as well, don't forget to sign up before December 11th. That's when those holiday card uh, expires, so make sure to sign up at the perk levels down below. Also, a big thanks to my Hush Puppy perk level patrons for sending in their adorable fur baby photos. I'm all screwed up now. I love them. Keep them coming. They're adorable and they make me so happy. And again, if you want to support ThreatWire but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, I've also opened up an online store of ThreatWire swag. Not everything will be available in there. Some of it is Patreon exclusives, but that's where you can find t-shirts and stickers, etc, etc. All sorts of limited and new products will be announced in the future, so that's over at snubsy.com shop. I'll put that link down below as well. And you can also check out my digital photography too, because I do take a lot of travel photography on my own personal time. All of that which supports my shows, so thank you again so much to everyone who supports everything. It's the holiday season. I'm in a very happy and giving spirit, so thank you to everyone who supports ThreatWire and all of my other shows. I appreciate you, whether it's on Patreon or not. I've got one more story for you this week. Another unprotected database was found on the web, this time affecting millions of Americans' SMS messages. Researchers Noam Rotem and Ran Lokar from VPM Mentor discovered the database belonging to True Dialogue. This Austin, Texas-based company handles bulk SMS messages for small businesses, colleges, and universities, so many of the texts were business-related. These texts could be used for mass marketing, emergency alerts, education, and a lot more. The company works with over 990 cell phone providers and reaches 5 billion subscribers around the world. The database also included business data for True Dialogue, which could allow an attacker to gain access to more data from their clients. 604 gigs of data were included, with the billion entries total. The data was hosted on the service called Microsoft Azure via the Oracle Marketing Cloud, and the data included full 
names, account holders for true dialogue, message content, email addresses, phone numbers for recipients and the senders, dates and times, and message status, along with user account details. Rotem and Locar found the breach on November 26, and they contacted True Dialogue on November 28. The data leaked could be used by spammers or criminals for phishing attempts, and also by True Dialogue's competitors. Companies like True Dialogue should secure their servers, implement proper access rules, and don't leave anything on the internet that just should not be there. Before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Andre, Danny, Eric, Troy, Paolo, G Ram, Rangom, Stan, Rummick, Leonard, S Club, Devin, Matthew, Justin, Nicholas, and Music Hits Face. Great username there, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you. You are all awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.